Hey there, this is Andrew, and today we're going to be continuing our Photosphere series. In the last video, we worked on our Skybox controller, and in this video, we're going to be working on our audio controller as well as our interface. It's all pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and let's get started. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is creating a script for our audio controller as well as our interface. So if we go to our controllers, we'll right click and we'll create a new script for our audio controller. And then we'll be creating a script for our interface. And our audio controller is, you probably guessed it, controlling our audio. And our interface is basically going to be hooking up our actions for cycling between these photospheres to our player input. So before we do anything, we can create some empty game objects for each of these scripts. This will be our audio controller. And then we'll create our interface. So we'll create an empty game object and then we'll create a canvas under that for now. And it'll just be an empty canvas. But we won't change anything right now. I think we'll just work on it in the next video. But we'll also rename this to interface. And we actually won't even need the event system so we can delete that. And then we'll go to our interface and we will attach our interface script. Now let's open up both of these scripts as well as our environment library in Visual Studio. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is making a quick addition to our environment library. If we go to our environment class here, we're going to be adding a sprite for our thumbnail. So we'll make a public sprite. And we'll call it m underscore thumbnail. And we'll initialize that to null. And this will come into play once we actually start to set up our interface. And if you're not interested in adding the interface and you just want to have the input for switching between each of the photospheres, you won't have to make this addition or probably follow the video to after this. So hopefully we'll just be going over the audio controller and the interface for just switching between the photospheres. And then after that, you should be pretty good. So now let's go to our audio controller. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is changing our inheritance from mono behavior to controller. And we'll be getting rid of our update as well as our start. And we'll immediately just add the apply that we have in our base class. So it'll be our protected override apply. And we'll just do, oh, we can actually just leave that there for now. And then we'll make a private audio source, which we're going to need to add back onto that game object when we're back in the scene. And I know I'm going to forget about it. <laughs> We'll make a private void awake so we can set up that audio source. And then before we begin to fill out apply, let's create the callback for our update volume. So it'd be private void updates volume callback. And it'll be a float in our value. And I'm running through this pretty quick because it very much emulates the Skybox controller that we made in the last video, except we're using it for audio. And now we'll just set the volume of our audio source. And we'll set it to value. So let's delete this. And let's just add a few comments here. So we just want to fade out. We want to set the clip. And then we want to fade in. So the first thing that we're going to be needing to do is creating a variable to store our start value, very similar to our Skybox controller. It'll be our audio source, our volume, will actually be our start volume, <laughs> our start time. So there's that. And then we'll actually start that coroutine for interpolating that value. interpolate and we'll pass it from our I think we had a quarter of a second for our skybox so we'll use that here as well we we'll use 0 0.25 we'll put in our start volume we want it to completely be zero we want it to be muted entirely and we'll be giving it our update volume callback and then we want to set the clip so we're going to be using our audio source we'll be accessing the clip and if you remember within our environment class, we have our ambient noise. So we'll have a new environment. Well, just our environment and our ambient noise. And then once we've set it, we want to begin playing it. So that's pretty simple. And then once we started to play it, we'll fade it back in. 
So our start value is our start volume is now going to be our audio source dot volume, which should be zero. And it'll be yield return. Let's not write all that out actually. Let's just copy this. And when I actually want it to fade in, I want to fade it over a slower time. So it's not exactly going to be syncing up with the visuals. So you'll see everything and then it'll slowly gently begin to come in. So it'll be a little bit more of a gentle experience. So I'll be setting the time that I want it to fade over to five seconds. And we'll have our start value. And then we want our volume to be one. And that's pretty much it for our audio controller. Now let's go to our interface. And the first thing that we're going to be doing within our interface scripts is making sure that we're going to be using the systems namespace. And this is a pretty involved script. Well, there's not a ton to it, but we're not going to be covering it all in this video. We're just going to be tackling the cycling between the audio and the photospheres. We won't necessarily be handling the functionality for hiding and showing the interface as well as making it align with the current view of the player. Obviously, we'll be covering that in a future video. So if we come down here, we're going to first create a reference that we'll be using for our environment library so we can cycle through it. And then we'll be creating a new class that we're going to be inheriting from Unity event and giving it an argument for our environment. So we'll be making a public class that we'll be calling new environment. And this is basically going to be the class we're going to be using for the event that's going to be um, that's going to be used by both of our controllers. So it's going to be a new environment. And I think I may have actually forgotten the namespace up at the top. Oh, we only used our system, but we need to add our events as well. So we'll do our Unity Engine events. We'll come back down here because our new environment is going to be inheriting from Unity event and the argument type is going to be our environment. So this is how we're going to let all of our controllers in the scene know when we've selected a new environment. But we actually have to create something for it or a variable for it. So we'll be new environment and we'll call it on new environment. There we go. And we're going to need our start, but we won't need our update. So we'll get rid of that. We'll make sure to add our curly brace back. And we'll add private to our start, and then we'll create a private awake. And then we'll be creating a private on destroy so we can unsubscribe from our events. And we'll get all of the listeners for the events out in one swoop here. So we'll write all the function signatures that we're going to be needing right now. So we'll want to create a signature for our next, our previous, our select, and show and hide. That's quite a few. So we'll start with the next. These are all pretty simple to write. They don't have any arguments. Previous. Select. Scroll down a little bit. And then we have private void show. And hide and we won't be filling all of these out within this video but we want to at least set up or connect them to our events okay so let's scroll back up here and the only other variable we're going to need is an integer for our index so we can iterate on it within our next and our previous functions so we'll write private private int and underscore index and we'll initialize it to zero so the first thing that we're going to be doing is subscribing to the events for our touch start and our touch end, where when we touch our touchpad, we want to show our interface. And when we remove our thumb, we want to hide it. So we'll be going to our player input. We'll be accessing the on touch start static event. We'll be adding a listener and it'll just be show. And that's pretty simple. And then we'll be doing the same thing for hiding on touch end. We'll be adding a listener. We'll call that hide. And then we'll have it for our touchpad left and our touchpad right for our previous and our next. Left up, add listener, 
previous and then our player input on touchpad right up add listener and then it'll be our next and there we go and that's all we're going to need for our wake for right now we'll be adding on to it naturally in the next video for filling our icons and a bunch of other cool stuff so now that we have these we'll just copy them and put them in on destroy so we can remove the listeners when this object if it's ever destroyed and this is just so we can be pretty clean about it and we'll just copy and paste and all of these there we go and then as soon as we start our project we want to select the first environment that we have within our library so when our project starts it's going to be selecting and showing the first environment in our environment library now let's scroll down here and we'll just be filling out our next previous and our select so the first thing that we're going to be wanting to do when we go to our next is we want to add to our index and then we want to check to see if we've gotten to the end of our list, we want to cycle it or reset it back to zero or wrap it basically. So if our index is equal to our environment library dot environments count, then we want our index to equal zero. And then once we've go on to the next environment or wrapped around we want to select the new environment using our new index and then we basically want to do the same for previous but we're going to be subtracting we'll subtract and then for our wrapping instead of checking for the count of the environments list we're going to be just checking to see if it's negative one so if we've subtracted and it's negative one then we've said hey we are outside of the range of environments, so let's take it to the end. So it's a negative one, we'll make our index, our environment library, environments, count. So it'll go to, or count minus one. So it'll go to the last environment within the list. So once we've either gone to the next one or gone to the previous environment and we select it, this is where we're gonna be sending that event to all of our controllers with the new information. So we'll go to our select and we're going to go to on new environment. We're going to invoke it and then we'll be getting our environment library, our environments, and then using our index. And that's pretty much all the programming we need to do. But I actually just remembered if we scroll back up to our event here, we need to mark it as serializable so we can see it in our inspector. And now we're done, let's go back into Unity so we can hook everything up. So we'll go to our audio controller first because we need to add a audio source. We'll go to our interface because we need to give it a reference to our environment library. And then let's add two little fields here, one for our Skybox controller and one for our audio controller. And then we'll go to this dropdown We'll go to the Skybox controller and you'll see that we can get a dynamic argument of type environment to new environment. And we'll just do that for both of those. And there we go. So now let's hit play and hopefully this works. And there we go. If you remember, we were actually on the second environment of our list and it selected the first one within the list because our index is zero. And now if we hit our right arrow, We'll go to our right photosphere, and if we go left, it'll go to our first one, and then if we hit left again, it's gonna wrap all the way around back to the last one in the list. And then if we hit forward, we should go back to the first one. And there we go. And then we can look around, and everything looks good, and it's working pretty well. One thing that I can show now is the default world rotation and how that actually affects this. So if we stop playing, and then we go to our environment library, we can go to our first element, and we can change our world rotation. Let's just flip it to 180 and see what we get. So let's hit play again. And if you remember, we were sort of looking over here at this sort of hill when you really wanna be looking at the bridge over here. So let's hit play. And there we go. Now we have a much better view when we switch to this photosphere for the first time.
And that about does it for this video. In the next one, we're gonna be working on our actual interface and we'll be cycling through those and doing some animator components. And we may be working a little bit more within the actual scene building stuff. So I'll see you then. If you have any problems, feel free to leave them below and I'll see you in the next one.